Good afternoon everyone, my name is Adam Fisher and today we're going to talk about cross-platform video and how you can implement it in your Xamarin apps. To do that we're going to use the Xamarin Forms video player which is a component I created and published on the Xamarin component store and it provides you with a Xamarin Forms control that unifies the playback and control experience of each platform. So Currently, we support iOS, Android, Windows Phone, and more recently, I've added support for Universal Windows Platform. So you can find the Xamarin Forms Video Player Control by using the link in the video description below, or you can head on out to the component, Xamarin Components Store at components.xamarin.com, search for Video Player, and you should be able to get to this page. Likewise, if you want to be able to get it on NuGet, it's also available there. It's available in both locations as a, down, a trial download, so uh, the video player will be limited to 15 seconds of playback. And I did this in the hopes that it would give developers the ability to test it out, see if it's right for their application, if it has all the capability that you need to be able to accomplish what you're hoping to accomplish in your applications. I would recommend, however, that you download the and get your updates from NuGet.org because Xamarin's component store is literally like a app store in that when we as developers submit components to them, it does take a little bit of time for them to approve the component. It goes through various quality checks. So you will find that uh, updates do come through a little bit quicker on the NuGet store versus the Xamarin component store. Okay, so with that, uh, let's take a look at this component. We're actually going to, I'm going to fire up Xamarin Studio here in just a little bit, and I'm going to show you how to go from zero to a fully functioning video player pretty quickly. But before that, let's take a look at some of the documentation. Uh, it's literally this quick and easy to create a video player that renders regardless of which platform you're operating on. You just drop this one little snippet into your XAML page and you're off and going. So one thing to keep in mind though is that this component keeps in line with the traditional essence of what Xamarin Forms is trying to do. It's rendering the native controls of each platform. So AV Player is iOS, Media Player on Android, and Media Element on Windows Phone and Universal Windows Platform. So those are the underlying controls that are rendered, and this component is unifying the interface for all of those platforms to give you as a developer a consistent experience, a consistent interface to be able to do things like hook into playback events and do various commands on the player like play and seek and pause, various things like that, as we'll see here shortly. So, uh, the platform, you'll want to keep in mind uh, as for the application, what your application is targeting, there are minimum requirements, so just something to keep in mind there. Okay, so let's go over to the Getting Started page on the Xamarin Component Store. This is typically what would load up if you just downloaded and installed the component. So if we look at the steps, just real quick, we'll go through here. Uh, you'll need to get your license key. So after purchase, you're going to specify your manifest package ID for your mobile application. And then you'll get an email with your license keys. And what this does is it ties your license key directly to your package name. So it's tied directly to your mobile application, which can run across all of the various platforms that we just mentioned, iOS, Android, Windows Phone, UWP. And I'll try to get those to you as quickly as possible. I try to stay on top of those. And then finally you'll want to initialize the Xamarin Forms video player in the same sense that you initialize it uh, Xamarin Forms, right? They, Xamarin Forms on each platform has you call init. It's the same thing with the Forms video player. You have to call init after the Xamarin Forms call to init. And then you can drop in a video player. So we're going to go through that here shortly in code, but just wanted to highlight all of the video player controls that are available to you. This kind of shows you that 
Um, you've got various commands, various properties you can set on the on the video player, as well as various commands that you can implement in your code behind. And this is kind of a table that just outlines all of those shown above. So you might want to do something pretty cool, like uh, maybe you want to set the display controls to false, and that will turn off the native play, pause, seek, all of that. Uh, that skin that you would normally see on the video player turns it completely off and then you can specify your own buttons using uh, command binding as you'll see here in a bit. Uh, film mode controls aspect ratio, time elapsed interval allows you to set a specific number of seconds during playback at which you can respond to an event using the time elapsed event shown below in the table and uh, you know a lot of these are pretty self-explanatory. I'd probably not set volume, just leave it to the default system volume because that's what the user has chosen for their volume. So it's probably best from a user experience perspective to just leave that alone. You can also see the current time at which the video is in the playback. State is actually an interesting one. So keep in mind that any video player you interact with is basically a state machine and this video player control actually you know through this property has various states so I'll show you this little diagram I've created here so when you specify the source of your video for playback it goes from being in the idle state to the initialized state and when the there's this asynchronous period where the video is actually going out trying to open the stream for playback so that's when it's trying to go from the initialized state to the prepared state. So once it successfully loads the media and it's available for playback, it enters the prepared state. Likewise, if you change the source again, it goes from being prepared back to initialized until it loads that media, until it opens the stream and loads it for playback. So one common issue that I find users run into is that they're setting their video player in their code behind, for example, or maybe just in XAML, you set the source equal to some remote URL, and then right after it, they'll specify video player dot play. And rarely does that ever work because, again, you're in this asynchronous point in time where you've specified the source, and now the player has to go out and load that media before it enters prepared state and allows you to then hit play. So what happen, ends up happening is that play command that you've invoked gets thrown away. So what you can typically do is call autoplay equals true on the video player and then it will take care of from the very beginning as soon as you set source it'll look for this prepared command to happen before it calls play. So it kind of takes care of that whole process for you. But let's say you wanted to take care of it yourself and do some more advanced stuff before you play the video, right? Maybe you want to show an ad or prompt the user with some dialogue, whatever the case may be. You'll have to hook into this prepared event and wait for that to happen before you can do whatever you want, what whatever custom action you want to do, and also before you can hit play. So to do that, you can look at the various playback events. There's this play, player state changed event, and it will take a player state changed event args type parameter that you can check the state for. Likewise, you can also look at just the normal state property on the video player itself. Either way, and you'll want to wait for that prepared state to show up. You know, maybe you just have a switch statement for all these different states, and when prepared happens, then you can invoke play on the video player. But again, if you want to just do autoplay equals true, then that'll take care of it for you as well. You also have those commands I was alluding to, so maybe you set display controls to false and then you want to set custom XAML bindings to your own buttons, your own image buttons that then hook into these different commands that are available on the video player. Another thing worth mentioning is that you need to specify a direct URL to a video, so something that ends in .mp4, .webm, .avi, something like that, that that's compatible with the platform you are currently playing on. So 
the Chill Player Example app has these cool XAML markup extensions that lets you specify the video ID of a YouTube or Vimeo video, but it's not officially supported by YouTube and Vimeo. So it's great for an example application, which is the case for Chill Player that's packaged with the component, but you'll want to use the official YouTube and Vimeo APIs if you're going to use this in a production application. This is purely, these XAML markup extensions are purely for example. One other thing to point out is permissions that tend to trip people up. You'll want to specify the correct permissions depending on what you want to do with your video player. So if you're going to stream network-based URLs, then you need to specify the internet permission in your Android manifest. And likewise, another common gotcha that people run into on iOS 9 and above is if you're going to stream a URL that is not HTTPS based, that's non-SSL based, then you have to specify this security permission in your info plist file. And of course we have a bug list queue, so if you run into any issues, uh, find anything go awry, please feel free to open an issue here at our, our issue tracker. Alright, so enough talk, let's get into some code then. Uh, we're going to go back up here to the getting started, and real quick we're going to go through creating a Xamarin Forms app and load a video player into it. So I'm going to go ahead and just create a new solution here. We'll call it Xamarin Forms app. Perfect. We'll just call it my app. And we'll just take the defaults. Okay. So the first thing we need to do then is we have to load all of the packages uh, you know, from NuGet or the component store, whichever you prefer. We need to add the Xamarin Forms video player package into each of our projects, both the platform specific and the shared portable class library. So if we just do a little search here, Xamarin.Forms video. And here we are, Xamarin Forms Video Player. So we'll add that package, accept the license. Success, and then we'll just do the same for our Android project. And we'll do the same for our iOS project then as well. Now, one thing we want to do, uh, now that we have the packages successfully added to all of our projects, we want to do this forms initialization call, right? The same way that uh, Xamarin Forms does their initialization call, we want to do our video player initialization call on each platform right after the forms initialization. And for this, I'm just going to remove the license key. I don't have one, and that'll just put the video player into trial mode for this. And then we want to uh, go ahead and resolve this reference to forms video player. So that takes care of initializing it on Android in main activity. And then if we go to iOS, app delegate, again, right after the forms init call, we want to do the video player initialization call in trial mode. We'll resolve the reference. Okay, and now we are fully initialized. So this video player can run on Android and iOS in our Xamarin Forms application. However, for iOS, again, remember, permissions-based things, uh, since we're gonna put this video player, I'm gonna use this, reuse this URL here, it is not SSL. So 
I'm going to need to add the permission to my info plist file so that I can play non-HTTPS based streams. So to do that, I need to add this dictionary key entry for the permission into my info plist file. So if we go to source, we're going to add a new entry. Oops. In SAP security, it's of type dictionary. Okay, and then I need the key is NS allows arbitrary loads. We'll set it to true. Oops, it's a Boolean. And yes. Okay, good. So that takes care of the info P list. Now, if we go back up to our shared library and we open my app, we're going to delete the default template stuff that comes with Xamarin Forms projects. And we're going to have we're going to create a new page that's going to go here. So if we go to add new file, we're going to create a forms content page out of XAML. Let's call it video page. Okay, that's the code behind. And now we just need to paste our video player in. So let's go ahead and grab that snippet. Um, oh, keep in mind too, we want to also, we need to properly import the, uh, the library as well. So I'm using O as my namespace prefix for the XAML. And I think I'm also just going to set autoplay equals to true. So I don't have to deal with listening for that prepared state, right? If you wanted to do that, you could hook into the on player state changed event and wait for the prepared state to happen and then invoke player dot play, right? So great. That should be all we need to play this video on iOS or Android or universal Windows platform. <laughs> so let's go ahead and run it. Oops, duh, forgot to set this to my video page. Okay, so let's run that. And as you can see, the video is now starting to load and play. We got our native, if I tap on it, and that's iOS default behavior, the, the UI controls will hide after several seconds, right? I can pause it, I can seek, I can, let's see here, I can rotate, right? And the aspect ratio adjusts, so. That is the video player. And with that, uh, that concludes our tutorial. So uh, if you guys, again, run into any issues, feel free to go out to the issue queue that's located in the link in the Getting Started page on the Xamarin Component Store. Um, and happy coding. <laughs>